Lifestyle Lovers. In this video, we're going to apply the categories to feelings. I have shamelessly taken this idea from these two guys, Christine Rosenquist and Alan Manning from the Brigham Young University. I'll set the link in the description, so please go check out their text where they apply the categories not only to feelings, but also to occupations, personality types, storytelling and visual design. But now, to the video. Imagine a 1000 piece jigsaw puzzle spread out on a table. At first, everything is just a random mix of colors and shapes. You can't even tell where to begin. If you haven't seen the box where the puzzle came in, you couldn't even tell what kind of picture it is. First, the variety of puzzle pieces produces all kinds of fun possibilities. The puzzle could be infinite number of things. But we want to turn the pile of possibilities into a specific picture. So, second, we need to find contrasts. The variation of the puzzle pieces, that is, the fact that every puzzle piece is unique, is not enough and we need to find more radical contrasts. We could, for example, search for the four corner pieces or the pieces that have a flat side and begin to build the frame. These more radical contrasts between the pieces enable us to act on the puzzle so that we can build a concrete frame. After you have built the frame, you can start to fill in the puzzle. So third, slowly through effort, a pattern begins to emerge. From the individual pieces emerges a coherent whole, the big picture, so to say, where there is continuity between the individual pieces. The picture of the puzzle becomes visible and now it can mediate information. In other words, variety framed with contrast produces a pattern which can carry information. These three essential stages for assembling a jigsaw puzzle is just one illustration and application of the Persian categories. We can visualize the categories with the help of a triangle, where the categories represent the extreme points of the triangle. We are going to color code the categories in the following way. Firstness is yellow, secondness is red, and thirdness is blue. We can think about the Persian triangle as a representation of the whole range of possible experience. In other words, theoretically, every possible feeling, action and thought occurs somewhere within this triangle, just as every shade of color occurs somewhere between the primary colors of yellow, red and blue. Now, let's apply the Persian Triangle. Say we want to build a systemic classification of different types of feelings and emotions. We would start out by marking out a smaller triangle from the Persian Triangle that corresponds with feeling. That would be the corner of firstness, or the yellow corner. This process is analogous to classifying different shades of yellow in the yellow corner of the triangle. We would find very yellow shades of yellow, more reddish shades of yellow, in this case yellow-orange, and more bluish shades of yellow, that is yellow-green. The yellow feelings would be feelings that correspond to the category of firstness. We can call them feelings of variety. The more reddish yellow feelings would be feelings that correspond to the category of secondness, feelings of action. And the bluish yellow 
would be feelings that correspond with thirdness, feelings of pattern. We are now ready to start the categorization. We start with the corner of firstness, where we would find feelings most intensely matching with the category of firstness. In other words, feelings of variety. These kinds of feelings can be free and loaded with infinite possibilities, which means that they can even lead to aimless action, but also to potentially fun experiences. These are feelings that could be possibly felt before we begin to assemble the jigsaw puzzle. What about the redder shades of yellow? There we would find feelings of firstness tinged with secondness. In other words, feelings of action. As we begin to assemble the puzzle, we could maybe experience some agitation. Maybe it would even lead to actual and forceful anger. But experienced and habitual puzzle makers would probably feel motivation. From the bluer shades of yellow, we would find feelings of firstness with a hint of thirdness. As the picture of the puzzle begins to emerge, we would feel these feelings of pattern, focus, maybe obsession, but also a sense of commitment to finishing the puzzle. We can further categorize the feelings by considering the three sides of the triangle. We can name them as sides 1 plus 2, 1 plus 3, and 2 plus 3. These sides are a mixture of the two categories combined. Therefore, we color code them accordingly. The side 1 plus 2 is a mixture of firstness and secondness, yellow and red. So it is orange. In the same manner, we color the side 1 plus 3 as green and 2 plus 3 as purple. Now, let's continue with the classification. The 1 plus 2 feelings would be emotions intermediate between free and agitated feelings. These would be feelings with an inclination to action. Emotions with a weaker sense of compulsion than agitation, but at the same time emotion not as aimless as mere fun. Therefore, these feelings could be stimulating, even distracting, and, in the best scenario, exciting. We should note how the side 1 plus 2 is the complementary opposite of the corner of thirdness, exactly in the same manner that orange is the complement color to blue, or, as in our current classification, distraction is essentially a feeling opposite to the feeling of focus or commitment. 1 plus 3 feelings, or green feelings, are intermediate between free and focused feelings. They have a hinge of orderliness, but nevertheless they have freeness and openness in them. 1 plus 3 feelings are also complementary opposites to the red emotions of action like agitation or anger. Therefore, 1 plus 3 would be emotions of calmness, boredom or peacefulness. 2 plus 3 or purple emotions would be between orderliness and action, that is, emotions that are inclined to orderly action. These would be emotions like concern or worry or proactivity. Again, these emotions are complementary opposites to the yellow emotions of firstness. Carefree fun is essentially the opposite of concern and worry. To summarize, we have constructed a classification system for feelings that include, so far, 18 discrete subcategories. Each of these 18 subcategories is derived as a different combination and configuration of the three categories of firstness, secondness and thirdness, or in other words, variety, contrast and pattern. 
we could further expand our classification by, for example, categorizing the emotions of anger with the help of the three categories. We could then further expand these newly formed classifications of anger and in this manner continue the classification endlessly. In this way we form a sort of a fractal image where we can always dive deeper and always refine our classifications in order to represent the experienced reality ever more accurately. The classification is never complete or perfect. There is always potential to further improvements and classifications. Peirce believed that through these categories we could classify every kind of experience and furthermore not just arbitrarily describe different experiences but rather to explain and predict many key aspects of experience. It is again important to understand that we should not think that everything should obey this triangle. Actually, it is the other way around. The triangle must prove itself when we apply it to reality. And it does so by producing these kinds of useful and helpful explanations and predictions. For example, our classification of feelings can explain why feelings of distraction seem to be opposite to the feelings of focus or commitment.